Hello, everybody, and welcome to the field. <laughs> We're actually out shooting for a change, not sitting in the gallery talking about shooting. So, and we have a frequent friend of the show and or friend of the channel, not the show. The show. This is a show now. <laughs> I'm Wait in till podcast next season. Mode. I'm in podcast mode. Okay. So, uh, Brandon Waller, who's on our podcast, and he's been in a lot of the vlogs. So. And what we're gonna talk about today is the camera he is still shooting. We got the Sony A7R 3 and if it's still relevant in 2021 transitioning into 2022. So how do you feel like this camera is holding up and are you feeling like you need to upgrade? So this year has been kind of crazy because Sony's done a ton, like. Right, so much. Sony released the A1, the S3 and the, uh, a7 IV recently, and while the A1 and the uh, A7 IV are both very good upgrade paths, right, well, right. and preferably what I think I want to do, uh, beyond whether this is relevant or not, is probably get both of them. <laughs> so eventually, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But so I think it is still a relevant-ish camera. Um, it does like i think you can manage doing professional shoots with it mm -hmm. but i think the asterisk is that you're just everything about this camera is not as good as the new cameras like the, <laughs> right. the i mean it's still a good camera very high resolution 42 megapixels autofocus is this is like the first somewhat good autofocus systems uh sony had yeah maybe? i would say the the transition well the a9 oh. was really the first well yeah and that was in like june may june 2017 yeah. and then this came out in november 2017 and the um then the a7 III then came out shortly after that the next yeah, yeah. spring so a7 III is kind of well, the A9, right. well, the A9 and the A7 III have a little bit better autofocus than the R3, but certainly the R3 was better than the R2. Oh, so yeah. So. If we're talking about the R cameras, you know, the, the R2's autofocus was not, not very yeah. good. And, like, I mean, I guess it was the first of the third generation kind of thing. Like, if you, I mean, the A9 was, like, a flagship or a flagship placeholder. Right, yes. So this was the first one to come out of, like, that uh, third generation Sony, which had, like, that new, like, pro enthusiast, like, pro, like, non-flagship users. Right. Uh, good autofocus. So, I mean, it's the first, and it's pretty good autofocus, but nothing compared to like the a1 and right like right. from all the reviews and stuff i've seen like the a7 IV too is going to be like not as good as the a1 but it has the same like uh system for autofocus in it right so, so i think another like kind of question about it is is like it has this the older design the camera body design yep. which um now that you've kind of gotten to use the a7r4 a little bit yeah like, how are you feeling about how that's holding up? Um, again, it's just, I think it's just a diminished version of, like, the newer stuff. Like, mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. like, the, it just doesn't quite feel as good in hand. It doesn't feel like the A7 original, like, where it really was just, like, this thin, almost frail kind of piece of camera you're holding where you're like it almost like if you felt like you moved it around too much like the grip almost felt like it might move or start to wear a little bit yeah like <laughs> i don't know how many people yeah. have used the original a7 yeah no but at the same time it's kind of just a weird in between where it's like it's it's good it's nice enough in a way but it's definitely just it doesn't have that firm kind of strong like good grip mm -hmm. to it and like the ergonomic have you used it with a battery grip at all yeah a little bit a little bit um, but not not significantly and it when yeah. i was using the r3 it was really married to mm -hmm. the battery grip and i used it i actually got it in 2017 and then used it for quite a while i actually used yeah. that camera for quite a while and i really i really liked it for landscape photography um and what was interesting was is that when the r4 came out i think that it it kind of went in a slightly different direction than it felt like the r3 because like yeah when the r2 came out like it it was like it had the first with 4k video yeah, yeah. um what were some of the other things that the the original 
like, it was like the, the highest, R2, right? Like, yeah, highest megapixel camera, which right, I feel crazy. like was it was 42 megapixels. Like yeah. it blew everybody's mind, but it wasn't ready for like pro use. No, right? the buffer on that thing, like you, if you were doing long <laughs> exposures, yeah. like you would be waiting a day or two before you'd get those right. back. Yeah. Like, so. It was it was kind of a funny camera as far as that goes, but yeah. it was exciting with the feature set. And then it was like they took the R2 and then they like made it a, a pro camera for shooting everything. Well, right? not only pro, but like a kind of the first do everything camera in a sense, right. like a true hybrid camera. Where right. it like yeah, like you had the high megapixel, you had uh, eye autofocus, mm -hmm. which was crazy. Um, so you could do portrait and like studio work within that sense. Landscape with forty two megapixels, like that was kind of insane at the time. Right. You could do four K video and like especially when it came out like pretty decent 4k video but even usable to today um oh I yeah mean, for sure it's, yeah, it's got s log 2 yeah. s log does it have s log 3 it has all three s logs all I three think. s logs and yeah. h uh, hgl hlg hlg yeah hlg i always yeah. say that one wrong <laughs> hgl <laughs> hyper gamma log or hyper <laughs> yeah so what was interesting though is that when the r4 came out like, I think everyone is expecting it to kind of continue that do everything. Oh, and yeah. it has a high frame rate. It's 10 frames yeah, per 10 second. Yeah, 10 frames per second. Which so, is, yeah. was really fast for it. So it was like, I think a lot of pros started picking up this camera and they're like, they're using it for wildlife, for sports, yeah. because they love the extra resolution. And then the R4 comes out and the R4 does all of those things still. Like, it still is yeah. 10 frames a second, but it adds 61 megapixels, which the the buffer is yeah. not is is hard to use with it the autofocus um, the is autofocus a bit the autofocus isn't bad on the r4 but at 61 megapixels it's just touchy i mean yeah. that's how it comes down to like it's hard to feel like you're getting that super crisp well and it's a little um, bit of a confidence thing too like you just sometimes you're just not 100 percent sure and right there are varying degrees of how much it hits i think from what i've noticed right. and a then there bit. were lenses that the r4 just like yeah, the 200 to 600 the and, 200 to 600 was a great example we're yeah. on the a um the a9 a1 um the r3 even that's a fantastic lens but on the r4 it just like oh it was yeah. not that good it just it struggled so it's kind of interesting to me, and I remember thinking at the time, I'm like, well, what is Sony doing? Because, like, what's going to be their do everything all in one camera? And then, of course, that question got answered a uh, about a year later with the A1, which is yeah. the true do it all camera. That I mean, Sony obviously was creating the A1 from the beginning to be the do it all camera. And what's which... interesting is, is like, in my opinion, the a1 is more the spiritual successor to the R3 than the R4 is in an, in what you can actually do with the R3. Yeah, and especially like given the timeline of it, like when this came out, it was like that. Obviously not it was quite, crazy. but easy. Like I, I remember using the R3 at first. I'm like, you can this camera can do at this at 42 megapixels. It was it it perfected the R2. Yeah, like if you'd use the R2. It was super frustrating. Well, and the R2 was, like, cool. The R... Like, yeah, the R2 was just, like, a cool camera. But, right. like, functionally and for a professional, like, you're, like... You can't rely on it. This camera, like... Like, I think... Uh, I think I agree with this point. I'm... I, I'm a little in between, but like I've been able to like really rely on it. Like with weddings, I get a little bit nervous maybe mm -hmm. with some of the little things, but like it's done me well and I've been able to do all the shoots that we've done like with Summit Bid. Um, oh, and yeah. I have like one heck of a uh, landscape portfolio that's been built almost 100% off this camera. I mean, I think maybe there's a couple lingering shots from the A7 like original, right. but really like all the landscape stuff I've done with is like, I've done with this camera. And then I have done like, I built a portrait career off of this camera right. at the same time. Right, you have um, with that camera. Yeah. yeah, and now I'm like fully employed, like as a professional full-time photographer and this is still the camera I use. So you obviously I, you can- not gonna, That's gonna change pretty soon. Yeah, I'll right. definitely be getting an A1. So, I mean, maybe that's the answer to the question, right. but- I had, So I have a question. I think this can kind of wrap up this video. Yeah. Um, is the A7R3 still for anybody 
over the a7 IV because the a7 IV added it's yeah. 33 megapixels so it's a little lower but not not that much right yeah it's, it's high res it's kind of in between it's got the better autofocus really good video specs like is there anybody that should pick the r3 over the a7 IV at this point my i think no uh from a if purely in a box if you can afford the a7 IV, I haven't used yet, so keep that in mind. That's a grain of salt right. that yeah. should be taken. But uh, from a like financial perspective, if you can just afford the a7 IV, I mm -hmm. would get that over that because it has the new autofocus. It has a bit, like the low light seems like it's going to be crazy. Yeah, 4K 60 uh, as a 10 bit. Yeah, 10 bit uh, 422, 422. Yeah, uh, for video. video. So you can. It's a kind of a do it all camera the again. Flip screen. But, like, do you yeah. prefer the flip screen or do you like the the pull off the back screen? I think I'm okay with both. Um, that has not been a huge, like, problem mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. But um, um, my guess, though, is that this this camera is going to be, what, $1,600, maybe less in the near future for yeah. us Yeah, yeah. from given the time this video to is buy made. New, well, they have the new um, A7R3A, which has an improved back screen. Yeah. Um, and I, I actually, d we will flash up on the screen with, what that's going for right now. Yeah. Um, but, and it's interesting that Sony did add that to yeah. the R3. It just goes to show they want to how relevant, relevant of a yeah. camera that was for, for a long time. And, you know, four years is in camera years. <laughs> a long, in camera years well, is now, a, long a long time. time. Yeah. Um, and uh, it, the A7R3 was definitely, I feel like, ahead of its time. Yeah, and I mean, I guess that's why it's lived this long and why Sony's, will, like, willing to keep it alive. And right. I guess my point, though, with... The uh, a7 IV versus the a7R Mark III, uh, like which one should you choose if you're trying to choose one? Uh, if you can go for the a7 IV, which is a if, because it's probably going to be $900, $800 more expensive than this camera. Right. And it might be hard to get. So I don't know That's what... That's true. That's like, a good point. That's a good point. It might be hard to get. So if you want a camera now and you want to pick up one of these, like it will do you good. So right. in, in that sense, maybe this is yeah. the right choice. You're just, you're missing out on that truly great autofocus yeah. that you see in the A1, the A92. The R4, <laughs> like I said, on paper, it has better autofocus. It's just that it just is it's the, harder to use with the the megapixels and it, yeah. it's touchier but when you get it and i do feel like i autofocus on the r4 works really well yeah you were yeah. using i autofocus yesterday on the r4 how did you feel about that so well, kind of a weird thing that i think happens with sony specifically maybe all the camera brands but whatever the algorithm and stuff they do with i autofocus versus like single point which are kind of the two i use i think i autofocus just hits way more and I had yeah. no problem on the R4 with uh, eye autofocus. Like, I think it hit every time I took a shot. And that's pretty true with this one, too. Like, right. Um, um, and what lenses were you using with yesterday? The 51 2 51 2 mainly? and the 85 1 4. Yeah. I so, think were the only two. I mean, the 51 yeah. 2 has that crazy quad, quad, linear yeah. motor craziness. Yeah. So, 100% behind the 51 2. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, the 51 2 is an incredible lens. Uh, but yeah, even with the 85, though, which is a little older, mm -hmm. not as good autofocus, it, mm -hmm. you can hear the grinding a little bit when the motors are trying to be like <laughs> getting there. Yeah. Uh, it hit with that too. So, would you choose it for just doing landscape photography? I mean, that's obviously that's kind of what our channel does a lot of. Yeah. And so we have a lot of landscape photographers. Do you think the extra megapixels? I mean, I I'm trying to decide too. I like I I feel yeah. like I I'm not sure whether the extra megapixels over the other features of the the A7 IV. My instinct is is that you probably would be better off investing the the little bit of extra money, the the difference in cost in some good lenses probably. Yeah, I mean you could definitely get. I mean, what would you want to get? I mean, you could, for the price difference, you could pick up that Tamron twenty eight to seventy five, which wouldn't yep, be a bad right. landscape yeah. lens. Literally for the price difference, yeah. Yeah. So, um, and I think depending, I think it depends on what type of landscape photographer you are. Like, right. well, I don't want to get too much into the nitty gritty of that, but like, low light quality on the A7 IV looks like it's going to be better. So That's if you're true. doing Good Astro, point. might be a better idea to go with that. Right. But if you're a low and slow kind of, uh, if you're a tripod, a tripod yeah. worker, the um, in-body image stabilization is also supposed to be better. Yeah. 
Um, this does have good, like, again, it's that diminished thing. Like, it, this has pretty good. That's just going to have better. In right. It's just going to be better. I mean, four years of technology yeah. is a lot. So, yeah. I think if you're a run and gun landscape photographer, like, if you're... Like, if you take it on hikes, if you're not going to be using it off of a tripod a lot. If you wildlife. Yeah, and, and if wildlife's a possibility. I mean, 10 frames a second. The a 7 IV still is just 10 frames a second. But that's that used to be the standard for wildlife just yeah. not that long ago. And I'm sure at one so, point it was even less. So right. who knows? Um, so I feel like that if you're going to... If you're just a landscape photographer, you shoot from a tripod... Buy yourself an extra nice lens and the yeah. R3. Um, but if you're hiking or if you do almost anything else, yeah, like the A7 IV is going to be the pick for you. The It's a good do-it-all camera. Like, in a way, like, it's the spiritual successor to this, too, kind of. Like, more than yeah. the R4 is. Yeah. No, the, uh, Sony brilliantly replaced two cameras with the A7 III. They replaced the R3 and the A7 III. So, yeah. The A7 IV. I'm sorry. I think I said A7 III. Yeah. So one note about that, like recommending the R3, is that the R3A is going to be like $3,000 or something like that. I don't know that that camera's for anybody anymore. Well, like for, for me, I think if you're getting this camera, at some point you are going to upgrade to something beyond this camera. Right. Um, so I don't know why you would invest in kind of like, it's the A7, like, sorry, but the A7 3A, just like... A7R3. Yeah, A7R3, sorry. <laughs> the names. I also haven't had coffee yet, so <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> but it's, you're paying, like, if you bought this, maybe even lightly used, like right. 1600 maybe yep. $1,800, yep. who knows? Like, that's not that bad for what this camera is. Like, you are getting a lot of value out of that price to the camera. Right. Three thousand dollars, though, like no, uh, like, and I guess I want to say you're almost to an A one. You're not almost to an A one, sadly, but like, <laughs> I would definitely halfway there. I would definitely get the A seven four over that. Uh, yes, and you know, but if you're really looking for, I mean, I, yeah, I guess it just doesn't make sense to me. I don't All really. Right. So to wrap this up, I think I've said yeah. wrap it up a couple times now, yeah. but we're really gonna really wrap, wrap it up, up with this last one: future casting. Yep. A7R5. Ooh, A7. What are we looking for? Like, do we want oh. them to go high megapixels? Like, 100 megapixels, ultra landscape, ultra resolution studio camera? Or do we want them to kind of bring back in that DNA of the R3 and have it be, like, still 61 megapixels, but with maybe a little bit better autofocus um, and maybe oh. better video features? And some 4K of that 120. stuff. <laughs> yeah, 4K, 4K 120. 4K Yeah. That's not in. Yeah. Uh, and that's not in the A7 IV. Interesting. Yeah. 4K 120 isn't. So, like. Not even crop. Which direction? I I can't decide because there's you know part of me is like the idea of having 100 megapixels, like even though I'll have to use a tripod, even though I'll have to use the sharpest lenses, that'd be super fun. Yeah, um, I think. My opinion on that is there's an A1 out there for video and stills that's expensive, but it does everything. Like, right. hard to complain about. Right. There is the A7 IV, which in a way does kind of what the this does, but better. Uh -huh. There is uh, the S3, so if you really want to grind with video, like right. the S3, and you can still do photos with a kind of. Um, I wouldn't recommend it, but... I mean, it's 12 megapixels used to be like a lot in the right. beginning, but, <laughs> but like, I think it's like Sony is missing a high megapixel beast and I'm sure Canon is going to come out with one. Right. So like in order right, for that's the them, thing is that I feel like Canon is coming out with a, we, the R5 S maybe yeah. is going to be a hundred megapixels. So I feel like it's coming and I feel like that, that, that ultra yeah. high res, and then, you know, you're going to compete with the Fuji GFX 100S, even though it's not medium format, you're still getting that megapixel. probability, that megapixel. And you're, then Sony is, is slowly but surely solving their lens problems. All their newer lenses are just incredible. Yeah, I mean, I built up um, my setup and I think I have like my perfect like lens kit basically. So, you know, and then the more lenses that have that quad linear motor are gonna just do better with higher megapixels. So I, I agree, I think they should go the high megapixel. Yeah, maybe like a 96 megapixel. 96 megapixel crazy piece, beast so. All right. and yeah okay well um thank you so much for watching this video 
Um, if you enjoy our photography camera content, if you could hit that like button and subscribe. And with that, we'll see you on the next adventure. Peace.